I went to a school in Tottenham called Wellborn. And when I got to second to last year, we did some exam at the end of the year and like I just smashed it. They called my mum and my dad into the school and I thought, why are they calling them into the school for? And they set us all down in the room and they said, um, they said that basically Joseph has been working too fast. He's completing the exams too quickly. And like basically everything's become too easy for me that I'm too advanced for my year. Um, so then they moved me up a year. When I finished that year, I remember thinking to myself, well, I'm going to go secondary school and that. I'm going to go secondary school, but I'm going to be too young to be in secondary school. So the year finished. So we're talking about what secondary schools I'm going to go to. And um, then I don't know who got in touch. It must be someone from like, you know, the board of schooling or something. I can't go to secondary school because I'm too young. So I had to do the year again. So that's when it just got mad. Just probably were just bored. Started to become complacent, become a nuisance. Then I went to St. Paul's School in Tottenham. And then that's where, that's where it started to sink in that like, well, I kept getting kicked out of class, stuff was, Stuff went, it was just, it was just not the same, you get me? I just was like, just doing everything whack. Um, I could have gone Northumberland Park, which is next door to St. Paul's in Tottenham, but that, my mum, she, it was bad enough as it, as it was, so it was like, to put me in Northumberland Park would have just made me even worse than I already was. So I went to a school in Winchmore Hill called Winchmore School. And um, by this time, because my dad was like a DJ, I was proper, like, proper, proper, proper into music. Proper into music. Like, parties starting at like eight at night aunties, uncles come around. Then I'd go to bed at like one, two in the morning and I'd wake up at like eight again in the morning. And you'd have like three relatives that are still dancing, proper slow. Like they're just drained, but they're still going for it. You wake up in the morning and you can just hear coming through the walls. You know, everyone's still there. So music's always been in my in my mind, in my soul, like, so by the time I got to secondary school, I was into music, my dad bought me my first album, S Doggy Style, Snoop Dogg, Doggy Style, he bought it for me from Edmonton Green Shopping Centre, I got it on tape, got an album on tape, so I started getting into rap, the drum and basses, the Heartless Crews, and it's like, Music felt, music was the only thing that, that interested me again because I felt that I had a talent. In school I had, I, I was good at art, all the stuff in PE obviously. Um, I was good at English. But it's like, I don't know whether maybe my attitude or my behavior just didn't fit what school was about because nothing there was was too much for me to to learn but 
maybe this maybe just just a format of school just a just a schedule everything about it you know it just wasn't it just didn't suit me you know what I mean like sometimes something just don't suit people like the way that things are set out people's systems don't run like that but you know I didn't do that well in school I left school I got one GCSE English that was it um, and I remember being in school like when I was younger and I always used to I always used to like I always used to want to like if my mum asked me what I wanted to be, I would say I'd want to be a doctor. But I felt like I got to a certain stage in school where it was like, you ain't going to be no doctor, bro. You ain't going to be one because the teachers were more interested in telling me off and putting me outside but not, not really, like punishing someone for something, punishing something, someone for something isn't, it doesn't help a situation, like I don't, I think like more communication was needed, like they were quick to throw me out rather than tell me like, you know this is the lesson, like what do you want to be when you, when you, when you get older, I want to be a doctor, well you know this is the lesson science, that's going to help you a lot. So I don't want to kick you out of the class now, but if you continue to do it, I will kick you out. But then in a few years' time, you will look back to this lesson and realise, like, I weren't getting spoken to. I'm not someone who's hard to listen either because from young, my mum and my dad, they've always spoken to me. And when something real has been spoken to me, I hear it. And like, I just felt like I weren't getting spoken to properly. I was more getting kicked out and excluded. And like, anyway, I was like, my point is, I just, I just got to the stage where I thought like, nothing ain't gonna happen for me, man. You know what I mean? Like, this is, this is, this is just bullshit, man. This, everything that I do at school is bullshit. Started rolling spliffs and going to school. Smoking spliffs on the way to school. By the time I get to registration, I'm laughing at everybody. I didn't know I didn't know anything. I didn't know I didn't I didn't I didn't even know where life was going, you know what I mean? I was in school, I was just doing anything I want. So I was just being like a total dick, like just being, living every day by how it comes and just thinking, oh yeah, one day this school shit's going to end and I'm going to be able to go out and f make a million pounds anyway because this school shit's just bullshit anyway. And like, when I left, I realised that, wow, everything I wanted to be, I ain't going to be that. I ain't going to be that. I just got told off. For about, I just got told off by people for about seven years, just getting told off, and put down, kicked out of class. You know what I mean? Then you come out of school and like, then you face, you face reality. You know what I mean? You face reality. Like, all that shit that they were trying to teach me in school was fucking bullshit, bro. I'm out here. I'm out here. EMC squared shit. I ain't never, ever walked anywhere and need to know what the square root of anything is in this whole life. I don't need to know the square root of shit. You get me? And it's like all that shit that I've learned was just rubbish. And I'm facing things out here like, you know, could be raining outside. I've got my hood on. And I walk into a shop. People are looking at me like, why has he got his hood on? 
you know, like it's raining. You know, or I'm ill. I'm going into the doctors because I'm ill. People are sitting there and they're shuffling over like, oh, he's coming. Look at this guy. Look at this hoodlum. You know what I mean? Or you're walking down the road and like women are like holding their handbags and stuff when they see you coming. And after everything they show on the news, I wouldn't even think it's wrong for them to do that. Or things that they read in the paper. But it's all these little things that since school, like you just get put down you feel like you're not worth anything you feel like you're not going to get anything in life so you go into a fuck the world mode you know especially if you smoke weed you go into a fuck the world mode you start smoking weed to get away to forget to get high to get to relax, drink a little drink, just to get away from all this shit. And that's why, that's why these people, they love listening to, you know, the rap music and stuff. Because a lot of people would say, oh, it's the rap that influences what's happening, but it's not. It's what's happening that influences the raps. Because if we weren't going through it, we wouldn't be rapping about it. And it's like, that's why these people out here are listening to this rap music, because they finally feel that there's someone out there that relates to them. Somebody out there that's been through the same stuff as what they've been through. And he's the voice. He's the voice of their emotion. He's he's the guy that's speaking all the things that they want to say, everything. You can see from the people, from, you know, the BB statuses, the WhatsApp statuses, the tweets, the Facebook statuses, what people are taking and quoting from these rappers. You know, and it's like, I just want to let people know that you have to work on remembering that this is the way that everything is set out for you to feel. They want you to have a fuck the world attitude. If you're not going to go and work for minimum wage, then they really want you in jail. They don't want you. They don't want you out here doing anything that they're not in control of. You know? You have to really drop that, really get ambitious, really feel feel that you can be more than 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 you are or than they tell you that you can be. You've got to really like drop like rub that out rub that out of your soul. Like don't don't think that way. No matter how many people hold their handbags from you, no matter how many times people give you them looks, no matter no matter how many times you walk into a store with money in your pocket to buy something, the whole intention and heart and incentive to buy something and a security guard is following only you, you one person. When there's another 20 people in the shop, he's following you. And you think to yourself, why is this man following me for? Like me, I've got money. I haven't come in here to do anything, but he's following you. No matter how many people do them kind of things, you just remember, you can be more... Don't be the person who they who they think you are. Don't be the person who they expect you to be. You know what I mean? Really rub it out, man. And just get ambitious and work hard for something. And don't watch no one. Don't watch nothing. Don't watch nothing what anybody's saying to you. Do your thing and make sure you're doing good. Make sure you're doing good. Because I'm, I'm not going to lie, it took me a while to... 
you know, even music, even being in certain places that I am through music and, you know, brushing shoulders with certain people in, in, in higher places, which I have to say, because there is a, we've got class system in this country, you know, you learn as you're around them, like, I, I used to find myself, I used to find myself doing things that I don't normally do, just to, just to show that I weren't a bad person, you know what I mean, like, you know, like, when you're, Like I don't like you know like you might see someone and you like you, and you think oh I'm not supposed to be here, so you start to act different. You start to you start to like act more like upper class when you're not upper class. Don't matter what they think you are, you're not upper class and you don't really like them. You don't really like upper class because they don't like you. You don't have to beg for them if anybody that doesn't doesn't like you. You get me. And I used to notice myself start acting a certain way, like to be like, oh, don't want them to feel like I'm too riffraff now. You know what I mean? But fuck them, because they don't respect you. They feel like because they've got more money than you, that they're better than you, when they ain't. They ain't. Their money can't, their money, they ain't, they're not going to take their money to their grave. Their money means nothing. They're not happy. They're not happy. I see them when I'm out celebrating birthdays with my friends in strip clubs. And I'm enjoying myself as a young man. They're out there as old guys. Still searching. Well, while we're here buying champs and drinking and enjoying ourselves. Making, you know, getting taken on the stage and getting funny dances and pictures taken of us. They're over there. Spending five hundred pound in private VIP booths to stay there for for hours and talk to this girl like she's like she's his little girlfriend. You know what I mean? Them them guys ain't happy. We don't have to respect them. They don't respect us. They don't rate us. We can be we can be something. You really have to, you have to ha you have to get that in your head you can be something don't watch things and see things and feel like oh I need it now I need it tomorrow because I think that is one of the major major reasons why why the riots happened and I'm not condoning riots and I'm definitely a million percent not condoning burning down of people of private businesses and stuff like that. I don't know what pe I don't know what people was getting out of that. I'm saying the reason for the riots were because people out there like myself that left school and felt like I have nothing out here. I'm not gonna be a doctor. I'm not gonna be nothing. There's no way that I'm going to be able to go and buy that. When there is, really, there is. Because you can go to college and you can get these qualifications and you can do things. But years of the down, the down putting of, the, of, of, of these people's personalities and characters makes them feel like that. That's how they feel. And I'm not saying, I'm not talking about what the facts are. It's how you feel. It's how you feel. And these people feel like the only way they can get these tellies or these trainers or whatever they were looting was to take it. This is the only chance for me to get the iPad. I need to go and take it now. Because nobody's caring about the police right now because the police don't care about us. That's why that happened. And as I said, I'm not condoning it. I'm sure, I'm sure, I am very sure that I would have been out there looting a few years ago 
before my music career kicked off. I would definitely been out there. Definitely been out there. I would have definitely been out there. But thank God, thank the supporters and the fans that bought my music and showed me some hope and some courage and showed me another way out. I put down all the drugs that I was selling and started to think positive. Because there was a time when I was on the street out there trying to trying to really 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 get to this dream by selling drugs and god knows god knows god knows god knows that i could have been sitting down right now umpteen times I could have been in jail right now. Just been trapped in that cycle. But I didn't. And for a good year, I was here and there with money. I couldn't really, you get what I mean? I was trying to pick up because I weren't always on the line. They didn't really think I was serious. They weren't ringing that much, but I was in my music. And I thought to myself, yeah, don't worry. Like, keep going, keep going. Going to a raise, like, getting a booking, like, once every two months. Getting a £300. Probably spend about 50 a 100 in the club trying to, you get me, floss with my friends. Then use the other £200 to come back and put it towards my re-up and try and get on the next level. You get me? But I stuck it out. Stuck it out. And now I can say that I can that I've seen both sides. And I remember how I felt. I remember how I felt. I remember exactly how I felt and I felt like nothing. I felt like nothing. And that's why I took from people. Because I felt That was the only way, that was the only thing I could do to take. Rub that attitude off your skin. Rub the attitude off your skin. You get me? You can be something. You can be something. I believe in my talent and I rubbed that. I'm not meant to be attitude off my skin. No matter who does anything or looks at me or does anything anyway, I know that everything that I see, touch, smell, taste, anything I do, I'm thinking about how I can put it into music. How I can put it into music. How can I make another man say, me too? How can man listen to my music and go, oh my God, how did he just say that? Till then I'll be sitting in my house with a big spliff watching Babe Station daytime. Oh my God, Skeppy is too real. Skepta is the man. He's saying that shit that no one's saying and I do that as well. You get me? I know that's my talent and I'm clear with it and I'm to the point and no person is going to make me feel that I'm not talented. Get out there and do it. Get out there, use your resources, be positive and rub that I can't be attitude off your skin. That's to all the underdogs out there that feel that way. Remember this. Because believe me, this is believe me, this is the underlying situation of the youth of today. We all get looked down on, and we all get told and made to believe that we can't be. You can't be. You can't be. 
You look at a man walking out of a office in Covent Garden in a suit and you feel like, I'm never going to be him. I'm never going to be him. But you can. You can. And all them girls that you're chasing and all that high life you're chasing, it's never going to last. It's never going to last unless you do it properly. It's never going to last unless you do it properly and have something that is not short term and has longevity. So work hard as to all the underdogs out there. Mm. And that's all I got to say.